Welcome to the Startup Grind. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome guests, incubator managers, VIPs, entrepreneurs. Welcome today for our second Startup Grind event in Gaza. Uh, special thanks for our partners, Gaza Sky Geeks, AI Media, and Hawiya, uh, and for the Startup Grind Gaza's volunteer team. We are thrilled today to have Dave McClure, one of the top angel investors in the world, to be our guest in Startup Grind Gaza. So welcome, Dave. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum as So just to give you a quick brief about Dave. Dave uh, is a founding partner of 500 Startups, a venture capital uh, firm and startup incubator in Silicon Valley with over 125 million US dollars under management. He has been an investor in hundreds of companies around the world, including Twilio, MarketBot, MakerBot, Wildfire Interactive, Viki, Mint.com, and SlideShare, among others. Dave has over 25 years of experience in Silicon Valley as a developer, entrepreneur, blogger, investor, and internet marketing. He has worked with companies such as PayPal, Facebook, LinkedIn, Simply Hired, O'Reilly, O'Reilly Media, Intel, and Microsoft. الآن حمل زي سمري صغير بالعربي. Okay. حمل سمري صغير بالعربي لكل نقطة من اللي بنحكيها عشان الجمهور اللي يمكن الإنجليزي عنده مش مشكلة. هلا ديف شركة مؤسس ل 500 ستارت أبس شركة استثمار وحاضنة أعمال في سيليكون فالي بتدير استثمارات بأكثر من 125 مليون دولار. استثمر ديف في مئات الشركات حول العالم including تويلو مارك ميكر بوت انتر وايلد فاير انتراكتيف فيكي ميد دوت كوم سلايد شير وغيرها. ديف لديه أكثر من 25 سنة من الخبرة في وادي السيليكون سيليكون فالي كمطور وريادي أعمال ومدون ومستثمر وعنده خبرة في التسويق عبر الإنترنت وعمل مع شركات كبرى زي باي بال فيسبوك لينكد إن سيمبلي هايرد أورايلي ميديا وإنتل ومايكروسوفت. So without further ado, we'll start uh, talking to Dave. So can you tell us briefly, briefly about your background, uh, your your like early places that you have worked in, Aslan yeah. and uh, PayPal? I, th I think you just told everyone, so I'm not sure I need to. <laughs> yeah, just um, I came. Uh, I was born in West Virginia on the East Coast, mm -hmm. and I grew up uh, in West Virginia, Maryland. Uh, went to school at Johns Hopkins uh, and was an engineer and mostly came out to California in 1989 and was originally a programmer, software developer. Uh, did my own small business for a little while in the mid 90s and mm -hmm. had a small exit with that. Mm -hmm. uh, gradually started shifting over from engineering side to marketing and business side. Uh, was at PayPal for 2001 to 2004, about three years. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly doing developer evangelism and marketing and some e-commerce education. Uh, in 2004, I left PayPal and started to do angel investing. Mm -hmm. uh, for the next four or five years, I was still working for startups, but started to do about 13, maybe 14 investments in other companies. Uh, had three uh, successful investments out of that, Mint.com, Mashery, and SlideShare. Mm -hmm. And then tried to start my own fund in 2008. Uh, summer 2008, not the easiest time to start a fund, but mm -hmm. ended up uh, at uh, Founders Fund working with Sean Parker and Peter Thiel for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And then started uh, 500 Startups, our VC fund, in 2010, about five years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, I guess we've invested in over 1,000 companies and in over 50 countries around the world. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. So just to recap uh, very quickly, uh, Dave اشتغل في يعني درس في جامعة هوبكنز درس مهندس بعدين بدأ في التسعينات مشواره اشتغل في باي بال من 2001 ل 2004 بعدين من 2004 بدأ الاستثمار كمستثمر في بعض الشركات الخاصة في 2008 يعني حط رأس مال خاص فيه وبدأ يستثمر بشكل مباشر وفي 2010 عبر فاوندرز فند بدأ يستثمر في شركات إضافية. Uh, now, you have invested in big names like uh, SlideShare, Tw Twilio, uh, Mid.com, and Wildfire. What do you look for in these startups before they become the slide, you know, the slide share that we know? Yeah, I don't think that we knew when we were investing in those companies that they were going to be big wins. Um, I think a lot of times we, you know, try and identify if the companies are producing interesting products and. Um, if we think the founders are smart and if they're flexible in kind of what their approach is, but the reality is we invest in a lot of companies. Uh, most of them fail. Mm -hmm. uh, a few of them succeed, and a very small number succeed very well. Um, but a lot of the reason that we called our company 500 Startups is because we intend 
to invest in a lot of companies in hopes that some of them will work out to be big wins. So even though the founders of those companies were very smart and very capable, I don't think we knew at the beginning that they were going to be as successful as they were. Mm -hmm. يعني هو طبعا الجواب انه بيدوروا على الشركات ومش دائما بتنجح معهم، يعني كثير احيانا بتفشل الشركات اللي بيستثمروا فيها، بس هم بيحاولوا يدوروا على الشركات اللي ممكن تو ميك ات. هلا ناو كان يو تيل اس ليل بيت مور اباوت 500 ستارت ابس؟ اي بليف يو هاف لايك انفستد ان اوفر 1000 ستارت ابس ان 55 كونتريز. واتس ات لايك تو بي لايك ا ستارت اب ان 500 ستارت ابس؟ Um, well, we kind of call ourselves Startup Zero. We were the first startup. Uh, when we first got uh, started, my partner Christine and I, um, she used to work at Google and YouTube, and I worked at PayPal and a little bit helping with the Facebook fund for a while. Um, we were just five people when we got started, and uh, you know, we have a lot, had a lot of the same challenges that other people do. We had to raise money for our fund. We had to you know, build a product and set of services. Uh, we had to get a building to operate out of. Uh, a lot of things didn't work easily. We were over budget on a lot of the things that we uh, were trying to put together. And uh, sometimes we couldn't always pay ourselves. Mm -hmm. and had to sort of get by. Mm -hmm. um, after maybe about one or two years, I think we started to get a pretty good understanding of how to operate our accelerator program. And, um, You know, we started to add more people and started to reach out to other uh, countries and started investing in Brazil and Mexico, a little bit in Asia. Um, but it took a long time, I think, for us to uh, figure out exactly how to do what we were doing. And, um, you know, that wasn't always the easiest path. Mm. Great. So, hello, uh, Hamabadu ka Hamas Ashkhas. كثير صارت معهم ايجابيات وكثير سلبيات بس بعد سنوات بدوا يعرفوا كيف يديروا ال 500 ستارت ابس ويقدروا يستثمروا في شركات خارج امريكا. Now why did you go global? I mean uh, I, I believe there are plenty of startups in the US. <laughs> why did you think there's significant potential globally? I, I think both Christine and I were always interested in uh, a lot of the international and global story. Um, Also, we were competing with a lot of other companies in Silicon Valley that were already successful investing in Silicon Valley. So mm -hmm. uh, accelerator programs like Y Combinator and Techstars had already been around for about five years. Uh, they were well established. Uh, other seed funds already had a you know, very visible presence in the Valley. Uh, so we kind of looked at what we thought were our strengths and advantages. And one of those was that we had connections with people outside the Valley. And particular, uh, you know, I had, my wife was born in Japan, I had friends from India and China, uh, we had other people join our team who came from Mexico and Brazil, um, and just the more we got into our business, the more we saw the international market as an opportunity that was growing, and if you looked at the numbers and the demographics, a lot of the things that, you know, maybe had made it challenging to do business internationally before were falling away. So there was a very large uh, adoption of mobile phones and smartphones. Mm -hmm. um, internet access was becoming easier. And just in general, there was a lot of talent around the globe that we thought was going overlooked. يعني هم ببساطة في 500 ستارت ابس ديف وشركاء فكروا انه كل الشركات والحاضنات في امريكا بتستثمر في الشركات الامريكانية فهم فكروا يطلعوا برا حكم انه الموبايل ديفايسز والشغل اللي بنعمل هناك بنعمل في اكثر من مكان حول العالم وتفوقوا على منافسينهم في السوق ما كان حدا كثير مستخدمه. Now speaking of the international market, how do you see the startup ecosystem in the MENA region in particular? coming about, uh, and more in, in more particular terms, uh, in places like Palestine with all the closure and all the problems, how do you see this coming in the near future? So we started uh, coming to the MENA region about three years ago and started investing here. We've made over 30 investments uh, in the region now, I think pretty much all over. So in Jordan, in Lebanon, in Egypt, in Dubai, uh, in Bahrain, working on a few projects in Saudi uh, and looking at some things here maybe in Palestine, both uh, in Ramallah and maybe here as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think with a lot of places we go that are emerging markets, um, you know, there's, there's a general story 
uh, from investors in those markets and even sometimes from the entrepreneurs in those markets that they're at a disadvantage and that you know sometimes entrepreneurs here aren't as good and frankly I think those are just you know bullshit those are not the right story and in fact a lot of times the entrepreneurs who come from tougher conditions are even better because they have to deal with tougher conditions mm. uh, they don't have as much money uh, they have to be more creative um, you know I think particularly for the Arabic speaking market you have a really big opportunity with you know between 200 to 500 million speakers uh, coming online over the next few years uh, you have you know some very poor countries but also some very rich countries um, I think maybe an advantage you have here in Palestine is that you know people are fairly well educated even though it might be slightly poor uh, you speak the same language as a, you know a lot of people who live in much richer countries and your costs for development are probably lower um, so while there might be physical boundaries that are challenges um, there's not as many boundaries digitally I think you know there's still maybe some challenges there but a lot of times I think the challenges we face the most are the ones that are in our own heads so I think trying to make sure that people operate from a position of confidence uh, is really important. And so um, telling yourself that story, telling your peers that story, making sure the investors and other entrepreneurs are supportive. Um, you know, I often tell people about you know, running a business in Silicon Valley 20 years ago probably is harder than running a business today in Palestine. The cost of building those products and the number of people that were online you know, much higher costs and much smaller market. So even though I know there's many challenges here and they're substantial, um, it's easier to build software-based businesses than ever before, and it's going to get easier. Um, so I think we need to, you know, not put entrepreneurs down and not put other people on a pedestal. Really, the playing field keeps getting more and more level, and there's a lot of advantages today's entrepreneurs have all over the world. Um, there's a lot of advantages and opportunities in the Arabic speaking market that are continuing to get better. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, yes, we have challenges, but entrepreneurship is about overcoming those challenges and operating from a position of creativity and confidence. Right. Tarjama Saria, Hala Hummam in Talat Sanamat, but we still have a month. Staff more of Sharikat, Phil Urdun, Lubnan, Maser, Al Bahrain, and Timar for Palestine. هو بيقول انه في اماكن زي فلسطين مظبوط في مشاكل كثير ولكن في ميزات زي مستوى التعليم المرتفع والتحصيل العلمي هذا ممكن يساعد الستارت ابس الفلسطينيين ممكن يستهدفوا اسواق عربيه زي الخليج وخلافه هو برضه بيقول مثال انه في امريكا قبل 20 سنه تكلفه انشاء شركه رياديه اكثر منها اليوم في فلسطين حكم ان التكنولوجيا بتسهل علينا كثير من الشغلات Uh, now, Dave, I think something in, in, relevant, uh, in relevance to what you have just said, in 2014 at ArabNet Riyadh conference, you gave some tips for the entrepreneurs there. And one of those tips was you only need one connection, an internet connection. Uh, <laughs> can you elaborate on that a little bit? Because I think it's very relevant to our case in Gaza and in Palestine. Yeah, I think what I was trying to make the point is a lot of times in the past, the investors have provided, have provided connections, you know, via, you know, their Rolodex or their access to other people. I think today, because of the internet, um, you don't need the investors as much to provide those connections. You might still need them for capital, but a lot of the connections are being provided by tools like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat. Um, and so a lot of the markets that people are going after you know, even though there may be physical border challenges, the online border challenges uh, are much more open, as long as you have an internet connection. Uh, and as long as you have people who are talented designers and marketers and engineers, you have the raw product materials to build internet-based businesses. Um, and so that's really exciting. I think that makes it a lot more approachable for people anywhere to get those. Except when the power goes off. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Sorry, I'm. You can. Ah, yes. Of course, we're witnessing one of the hurdles that entrepreneurs are facing with electricity. Where's the walk and charge guy? We need him right about now. Yeah. So, هلا عسريا. ديف حكى على إنه الشبكات الأشخاص اللي كانت زمان مهمة اليوم الإنترنت كتير بيساعد الشركات الريادية إنه إنه 
تقدم بشكل او باخر عندك الفيسبوك عندك السوشيال ميديا بتقدر ببساطه تتواصل مع ناس حول العالم uh, والعالم صار يعني اشبه بقريه مفتوحه uh, now you have invested you, you, you mentioned you have invested in some startups in the middle east uh, now will we dave will we see dave mcclure investing in some startups in gaza and in palestine actually uh, Sure, I think although you might see Hassan Haider, who's our partner out of Bahrain, doing that investment. Mm -hmm. uh, you might see other people in our team who are Arabic speakers doing that. I think for most of our investments in the regions in, outside the U.S., uh, we try and find people who are uh, speakers and local nationals on the ground to do our investments. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now we have two Arabic speakers on the team. One who's in San Francisco, uh, Zafar Yunus from Jordan, mm -hmm. and also Hassan Haider here in the region in Bahrain. Mm -hmm. um, probably we'll also be looking to bring folks on the team eventually uh, in other larger markets like Egypt and Saudi and maybe the UAE, and possibly here in Palestine as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's talking about that they have people in the group who speak Arabic and they have the issues that we have in Palestine and in the Arabic region. So, in fact, there is an issue that if there is a chance, they can use it. Uh, now, we are running short of time, so I just want to ask you if you have like, some quick tips for the entrepreneurs. If you can like, give like, some three golden tips for the entrepreneurs, given that you, know, you see the situation <laughs> and the electricity and, and these things. Yeah, but again, this is not that unusual. I think in the Philippines and in India and Africa, Power is also a challenge, and so again, it's just something to overcome. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, um, you know, again, the, the things that are really great about being able to do uh, software development and entrepreneurship is costs are lower than ever, and the access to markets are larger than mm -hmm. ever. Uh, particularly, again, for the Arabic speaking market, I think we're, you know, in a world where there's lots of connections happening and there's starting to be a, a unified, larger Arabic speaking market to go after. Um, there's not very much content and products and services for that market right now. So um, in places like the U.S. or in China, there's huge amounts of competition for those audiences and lots of copycats. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in these markets, there's still wide open field for people to put products together. Uh, sometimes that's taking existing successful business models from U.S. or Europe and Asia and implementing them in the local language and culture. Sometimes it's coming up with very specific uh, local market solutions that don't have any parallels in other markets. Um, you know, so I, I think there's just lots of opportunity in the region. That's why we are here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we're investing here. And probably in the near future, we're going to have a fund that will be very specific to the MENA region. Mm -hmm. And we hope to be a lot more active in the region after that. Mm -hmm. Great. سريعا برضه هو ديف بيعطي بعض النصائح انه بيقول انه الاسعار التكلفه منخفضه للستارت ابس لتطوير السوفت وير ممكن السوق العربي واسع وكثير ممكن من الشركات اللي بتشتغل في السوفت وير ممكن تستهدفه في الصين وفي دول ثانيه يمكن في منافسه شديده بس يمكن السوق العربي لا يزال في فرصه ومتسع من من اللاعبين انه يدخلوا فيه. Uh, again thanks Dave for for being our guest. I think uh, we can take a few questions. Uh, Now, if, do you have anybody has any questions for Dave? You want to ask him? إحنا معلش ندخل على الأسئلة إذا أحد من شباب صبايا عندكم سؤال بس إحنا يمكن عشان مش شايفين. Okay. Tough questions. Ask some. Okay. Uh, لو بالعرب مش مشكلة أنا بترجمه. تفضل بس لو هو عشان نشوفه. تفضل تفضل. معايير معايير. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So he's asking about like your criteria. What's your criteria for investing in startups here in Gaza and like persons or in startups? What do you look for in particular? Uh, in general, we're trying to invest in early uh, businesses that have a functional product mm -hmm. and have some small number of initial users or customers. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, for the most part, we're not investing just in ideas, but really uh, people who have implemented those ideas and product and have a small customer base. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to help focus um, those entrepreneurs on how to grow that market. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, looking at early users and customers with product, and then how do we establish growth channels, whether those are organic or paid channels? Uh, that's when we like to get involved. Right. سو so, uh, يعني هو ببساطه بقول لك انه هم بدوروا على الشخص وبدوروا على الفكره برضه فلما الفكره يكون فيها يعني مكونات اللي انه تنجح والشخص نفسه انه ماشي وعنده تجربه بهذا المجال هو ممكن يقدروا يعني يسلطوا على الضوء ويختاروا 
Any additional questions? I'm sorry, just so I can add on to that. The other thing that I would say is oh. that for a lot of emerging markets or places where access to capital is limited, we tend to want to focus more on transactional businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, so e-commerce, marketplaces, SaaS products, uh, paid mobile services, things where it's fairly straightforward to have a business model that generates revenue right. uh, and not to rely as much maybe on content businesses or ad related businesses where it's harder to monetize. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that there aren't successes in other areas too, um, but it's just easier to get to sustainability if there's simple business models uh, that are straightforward to pursue. Great. So, برضو إضافة على الجواب اللي حكيت ديف هلا إحنا في عنا بقول لك بيستثمروا في الشركات اللي بتكون سيرفيس أورينتيد يعني لو خدمات دفع خدمات تقديم خدمات الخدمات الصغيرة نوعا ما اللي ممكن تعمل تغيير وممكن لكلها جمهور أكثر من إنه يكون برنامج متكامل في شغلات يمكن متطورة شوي كان عندك سؤال؟ So we're back online. Okay, so uh, another question, how can an entrepreneur actually market unique products rather than get coming up with copycat products and, and traditional products? What's the unique part, uh, differentiation? Well, I think first of all, it's okay to come up with copied products and that sometimes entrepreneurs uh, get a little too uh, uh, high and mighty about copying products. Sometimes the easiest ways to have successful businesses is to look at successful models and bring them to other markets and other company, countries. Um, at the same time, there's usually localization of those products, uh, basic language localization, cultural localizations, different ways to fit into those markets. Uh, in terms of coming up with original products, I, I'm not sure I'm the right person to ask because I don't know this market, so I'm probably going to ask you what's the way to come up with those products. Um, how to market those products? I think you know there's lots of different ways to market products these days, particularly via social platforms, uh, Facebook and Instagram, uh, messaging products, uh, picture-based platforms, video-based platforms. Uh, part of I think what's most interesting in the last few years has been the explosion of marketing channels and platforms to reach people all over the world, and how those are generally very inexpensive to go after. So Instagram has now become a you know, a marketing platform for a lot of e-commerce products and services. Uh, messaging platforms have become very popular ways to spread information about new apps and services. And I think particularly as you know, access to online uh, broadband becomes easier, video platforms are just going to explode. Uh, already in Saudi is probably the highest per capita consumption of mobile video. And basically, you know, your mobile phone is your TV in Saudi. Um, so there's a lot of content that's really popular in the region. I think uh, certainly a lot of digital uh, media that's coming out of Egypt. Um, so I think it's just a really great opportunity for people to produce products and services here. Mm -hmm. تمام هو بقول لك انه انت ادرى يمكن في السوق المحلي بس من ناحيه المبدا مش غلط تبدا تقلد شيء موجود او تستخدم شيء ثاني وفي عندك السوق العربي في السعوديه او في مصر او في بعض الاسواق العربيه شغلات كثير في ترند طالع فبالتالي ممكن تستهدف هذه الاسواق برضه. Any additional questions? Yep. I need to understand the indication of the product that you are investing in. My investment plan. Just okay. One part of the question. I'm sure that your investment comes from profitability. That you we, we hope so, yes. Okay. We want to make money too. Will you have room for kind of, uh, especially in Gaza, to expand on donations on a grand basis? For example, if, you know, education, you need to establish uh, schools in Gaza. Right. And the schools is not profitable. Uh, and it has a yeah, some some and schools can be profitable. You know, I think we need to take a look at it. We've invested in other uh, incubator programs around the world where they're doing education, some that's provided for free, some that's provided on a paid basis. Uh, we invested in an accelerator in Thailand that's doing core education in design and marketing skills. Uh, we invested in uh, an accelerator in Nairobi, Kenya that's doing investment into startups but also supporting the local community. Um, I don't know that we're in the business to do, 
you know, free services, we'd have to be more creative than that. Or, you know, me personally, I might do something on the donation side, but um, not, we're investing other people's money, we have to make a profit on that. Um, but I think there's a lot of services that people give away that sometimes can be monetized in different ways. Um, sometimes by maybe giving away education and helping create a pool of entrepreneurs, you can figure out ways to make that pay off later. Um, might take a little bit of uh, ingenuity and creativity to come up with that. Great. So, uh, we'll see. Yeah. Thank you. So, any final questions? One final question. Yep. Which type of uh, companies do we prefer to invest in? Yeah. I don't know if I lost that there. Check, check. Um, so uh, we prefer to invest in ones that make money. That's, a, that's certainly one idea. Um, like I was saying before, we probably have a focus on revenue generating businesses uh, first or transactional focused businesses just because when we're investing in uh, emerging market regions, capital is sometimes challenging to come by. Uh, so we'd like to see a relatively short path to monetization. Um, E-commerce businesses, marketplace businesses, SaaS businesses are usually easy places to start. Uh, we have invested in content-based businesses and other user growth businesses as well. They're just a little harder to make work unless you get to large amounts of scale. Uh, so in general, we like to take a little less risk on the business model, uh, take more risk maybe on the entrepreneur. Um, I think you know there's just a wide variety of businesses at the consumer and small business level that we think are interesting. Um, possibly even at the enterprise level, I'm not sure about whether that's going to be a great fit for this market right away, but maybe over the long run. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yep. Let me stand so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so basically Wafa has a startup in like a niche market in poetry, Arabic poetry. So mm -hmm. she wants your advice on how to go about in like these kinds of niche markets. They don't have a, a quite a clear idea of on monetizing maybe their product, okay. but they have an idea for a startup. You know, I think with anything you're going to have to identify what's the closest business that has a transactional component that you can connect to. So whether that's poetry books or I don't know if there's live performances or whether there's a set of experiences that the poetry might connect with, whether that's maybe travel or weddings or something else. I don't know how best to kind of come up with that. Um, you know, it's also important to identify which businesses are you know, maybe pursuits that you want to do because of, you know, passion and which ones you want to do for, for monetary gain as well. Um, I don't know, I'm a big fan of uh, Khalil Gibran and actually my daughter's name is Layla, so I, I like poetry. But you have to find a market for that. Mm -hmm. Maybe for baby naming services, you could come up with uh, ways to get poetry to monetize through helping people figure out names for their kids. I'm coming up with crazy ideas right now. They're probably not that great. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm like Dave. You know, try to find things that that relate. I mean, maybe a conversation, a poem, or a naming of children, or things that have a relationship with the field you're working in. Maybe it's something that enters your language. Okay. One final question. We have room for one more question. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Yes.
uh, mostly emerging markets, Latin America, Southeast Asia, India, Africa, uh, Middle East, and um, you know, some of the founders behind WhatsApp were, uh, one of them I think was Ukrainian, so uh, other people on the team were from other emerging markets, so there's no reason why it couldn't come from those uh, markets or from here. Um, the point that I was trying to emphasize was I think you know, businesses like Sukh.com and others that are more basic and straightforward, um, possibly businesses in education or in healthcare or in travel, um, those are all going to be very obvious businesses that I think are going to have large customer base in the Middle East and you know, people in other markets are not going to be as familiar with those customers or those services as people here would be, so you have a natural advantage in those areas. Um, so I don't, I don't think the comparison has to be about what's the next Facebook or next Twitter. Uh, I think you know, a market with 200 to 500 million people is certainly big enough to do lots and lots of interesting big businesses and companies. And so we're hoping we get the chance to invest in entrepreneurs who are going to be doing that. And whether they go global or they go regional or they go just to even to the local market, I think there's a lot of potential. Great, thank you. So, مرة أخرى دي بيقول إنه ممكن يكون في مشاريع كبيرة زي فيسبوك أو واتساب تيجي من المنطقة أو تيجي من أي مكان في العالم ممكن هم يستثمروا فيها أو ممكن يستثمروا في الشركات الصغيرة نوعا ما زي ما حكى تهتم في السيرفيسز طبعا كل سوق له مجاله والمجال مفتوح والماركت واسع قدام الجميع. Thank you, Dave, for being with us today. It's a great honor to have all of you today. I would like also to thank our entrepreneurs, uh, guests from UNDP, Fatin, Rose Design, and, and everybody who have attended here today. Uh, so we have uh, something small to give you as a farewell. Uh, okay. Awesome. Thank you.